Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U online instruction. Hi, we'd like to uh, end up the uh, week's lectures by uh, discussing the uh, n particle wave function, or it's often referred to as a many particle wave function. And uh, it's going to be a short lecture because this, this topic is uh, very complicated and I'm by no means an expert in it. But I just would like to try to convey to you the idea that all these uh, discussions we've had uh, for two electrons can be generalized uh, uh, into n electrons. And, then, and when we do that, we refer to n particles or many body uh, uh, particles, uh, uh, wave functions that uh, have to be written down to dis uh, to uh, solve these these much more complicated uh, problems. Um, question is how do you um, how do you extend these two particle wave functions into many particle wave functions? So, for instance, let's say we've got n electrons in a in an atom, and we want to write uh, a wave function to properly describe these n electrons or these n particles. Um, a general way to uncover uh, the nature of that wave function that describes these n particles is to uh, invent what I call a, a, an exchange operator, right? And this exchange operator is written as script P and it's got two subscripts N and M. And when this operator operates on a wave function, all it does is it, it takes the uh, particle at position n and interchanges it with the particle at position m, right? And in this process of interchanging particles uh, then allows us to um, uh, uh, understand some of the fundamental principles that govern the formation of these n-particle wave functions. So, for instance, if I... Um, if I just execute this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, exchange operator on a, on a, a five particle wave function. So just to be specific, I say I've got a, 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 a system. It could be an infinite square well. It could be an atom. There's five electrons in that, uh, that uh, atom, right? Each electron has a different position, R1, R2, R3, R4. I can write that in shorthand notation as, as follows. And if I then operate on this many particle wave function by this exchange operator, let's say P sub 1, 5, all it does is it takes, takes the particle at, at position 1, right? And it moves it to position 5. And it takes the particle at position 5 and moves it to position 1, right? And so the, uh, the operation of this uh, exchange operator on this wave function then produces a wave function uh, that looks like this, right? It's a very simple idea um, and it just allows us to formally um, uh, get at the, uh, the fundamental uh, symmetry that, that uh, has to uh, underlie this particular wave function. So, um, it's a fair question to ask, what are the eigenvalues uh, of this exchange operator, right? All, all of quantum mechanics is based on eigenvalue problems. And so now what we do is we, uh, we really consider an n-particle wave function. So now we've got uh, a, a wave function that ranges over n particles. And we, for instance, operate on that wave function with this particle exchange operator. And this particle exchange operator just uh, uh, flips R and S, right? So it takes the particle at position R, moves it to position S, takes the particle at position S, moves it to position R. And what we say is we say that uh, there's going to be an eigenvalue lambda that's associated with that exchange. And the question is, what is lambda? Uh, the way to answer that question is to uh, uh, apply the exchange operator again a second time. When we apply it a second time, what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the, the particle of position R, move it to S. We're going to take the particle of position S and move it to R. And of course, what we like to believe is we like to believe that we get back the same wave function again, which of course we do if you just apply that... Um, uh, 
uh, exchange operator two times, you'll get exactly the same wave function that you started out with, uh, and you'll have an eigenvalue which is equal to lambda squared. So you like to believe that uh, this, this wave function here is exactly identical to this wave function here, and that implies that lambda squared has to equal one, and that implies that lambda's got to be equal to plus minus one. So um, we get essentially the same condition uh, that we had uh, for the two particle wave function. It's a completely general result. There are two possibilities, uh, uh, and the two possibilities for writing the wave function are associated with the two roots of this particular equation for lambda squared. So we, we have the, we have the situation where, uh, under particle exchange, the wave function comes back to itself again with a positive sign, or, uh, under particle exchange, the wave function come back, comes back to itself with a negative sign, right? Uh, and so, uh, this, this class of particles called bosons and fermions that we, uh, uncovered just discussing the two electron case, uh, that's completely general, and it applies to these n-particle wave functions, right? Um, and uh, they have to satisfy this same symmetry under particle exchange that we, we, we observed when we did the two-electron case. Uh, I'll just mention that um, there's a very active branch of physics that investigates uh, the uh, the properties of these many-body problems, right? These many-body problems um, basically ask the question, what happens when you take n electrons or n atoms and you, uh, uh, you put them together into a, a quantum system? Uh, what new properties might emerge from this complex assembly of n particles? Uh, and very often these new phenomena that, that, that appear, uh, things like superfluidity and superconductivity, uh, they're really not anticipated by the known microscopic laws of nature. Uh, they only come out because of these, uh, uh, because of your ability to write the, uh, correct, uh, many particle wave function. So, uh, I have no intention of trying to, um, um, uh, convince any of you to do many party, many body physics, but, uh, just wanted to make the, make the case that it's a very active, uh, area. And, uh, it basically is, uh, uh, a, a, a field of study that, uh, is devoted to writing, uh, interesting, uh, wave functions that describe n particles, right? And, um, a lot of, a lot of theoretical work goes on in that particular area. So I just wanted to mention, uh, that is, is sort of a way to, uh, end up the um, uh, discussion that we've had in this previous, in this, in this week of lectures. Uh, I'd like to end this lecture with a point-by-point um, uh, -point summary of some of the important points that we've discussed. Some of these ideas have been stretched over two or three lectures and, and, and perhaps you, you haven't been able to comprehend the logic uh, that connects the various steps. So what I attempt to do in this, uh, in this slide is to uh, provide you with a summary of the important ideas. I've tried to be very succinct and uh, uh, try to label the, um, the important steps that we've, we've gone through uh, in, this, in this particular discussion. Uh, so I, I won't read these, um, these points here. It's uh, something that you basically would have to sit down and, and work through on your own. But hopefully after you've read through uh, this point-by-point -point summary, you might have a, a, a better appreciation for the, uh, the logic and structure of the arguments that we've, we've uh, run through for the past uh, five or six lectures. Uh, I'd also like to say this is going to end our discussion of uh, uh, quantum states in, in atoms. Uh, what we're going to do uh, for, for the next two weeks of the course is we're going to explore the, uh, the uh, different statistics that are required to uh, describe these fermions and bosons. It turns out the, uh, the uh, spin of these particles has a fundamental influence on the um, uh, statistics that these uh, 
particles undergo when they're grouped together in large uh, uh, aggregates. So um, we're going to move into a statistical uh, analysis of these probabilities in the next couple weeks. And that means we're going to uh, put away Schrodinger's equation, finally, <laughs> and uh, move on to a new topic, uh, which is basically quantum statistics. So next week, that's where we're going to start. We'll start with a general uh, overview of probability and probability theory, and then we'll work forward and, and try to explain some of the uh, uh, concepts and ideas that you need to understand in order to predict uh, how groups of these particles are going to behave when they're all uh, condensed into uh, a small region of space. So uh, we'll see you for that new set of lectures, and um, uh, uh, we'll learn something about quantum statistics in the process. So thanks an awful lot, and uh, we'll see you next week.